So today we're going to talk about the hot topic that everyone is going crazy for in the fitness industry, and that is your deep hip external rotators. That's a joke. Probably no one has ever really known or cared about that. But the reality is that most of us suffer from having weak group of muscles in our hips that do this rotation. While the action is not very sexy, it does this, it has a huge bearing on how we walk, how we jump, how we run, and how we squat. And if it's weak, it's not hard to identify in people because you can see, bam, right at their knees when they do what we call internal rotation or knee valgus diving in. So when you go to jump and your knees come together, or when you're running and you see your foot cocked out to the side, or when you're squatting and your knees are diving in, that is a huge, huge sign of having weak glutes. The deep hip external rotators basically come from your sacrum and hip, come all the way across and attach to the femur. So when they fire, they turn the whole leg out. This is why sometimes when you hear people squat, they say, open your knees or press your knees out. When I externally rotate, the whole or entirety of my leg turns. But when my foot is flat and I fire that muscle, only my knee can go. And when that happens, if I'm gripping the ground well, I'm also creating a higher arch and a stronger base of support. So there's a huge trickle-down effect from making sure that these muscle groups are engaged. Now, if they're already weak and difficult for you to fire, then we have to get a little creative with how to wake them up, so to speak, before we can start incorporating or integrating them into your exercise. Very low barrier to entry, yet highly effective, mini bands. I see athletes of insanely high strength levels still using these to warm up, so you will never outgrow the mini band. You may need slightly higher resistances as you go, but as a great way to prime the muscles before physical activity, can't be beat when it comes to the deep hip rotators. So taking your mini band, simply slipping it on and above both of your knees. From there, we're gonna go through that simple range of motion that we just talked about. I'm keeping my feet flat. I'm softening my hips and knees. So I'm in kind of what we call a power position. And then I'm going to allow one knee to come in. So that way I can drive that knee out. So I'm exploring that whole range of motion of I'm stretching that muscle group completely, and then I'm trying to activate that group completely. Because I'm isolating it, I sh if you even need, you can place a hand on your hip to feel that muscle contraction turn on. This can help with what we call your mind-body connection. If I can't feel it, then chances are I can't turn it on. So once I can become aware of that sensation, it is now easier for me to simply mentally activate that group. And from there, I am more likely to use it when I'm performing exercise. In this case, I like to call it the mind-booty connection. From there, we can add a little bit of integration. Keeping that band on, there's other exercises and warm-ups that you can do, but to give you an idea of now how to integrate, when I squat, as I mentioned earlier, knees should stay open. The band gives me good resistance to press against. So if I'm squatting and I can visually see that band pull my knees in, I know my groups have shut off and I have something to push against to give me this what we call tactile feedback. So I can keep pressing that band open as I squat all the way down and I am very much aware of how my glute is working when I squat because of that band. So this is a fantastic warm-up drill, especially if you have squats that day. And that is the importance of and a couple things you can do for the deep hip external rotators.